TTG coming to you from her private Serpentarium. This video is based on multiple viewer requests. I have had lots and lots of questions about how to tell if your tarantula is going to molt, which I recently did a long video showing several specimens, which I will link in the description below. Now more questions are coming asking what to do if your tarantula is going to molt. So tonight we're going to talk a little bit about that. Let's get started. Let's take a look at a few animals that are getting ready to molt so you can identify that first of all. For more detail, do refer back to that other video. This is a juvenile Brachypalma smithi. Looking at its abdomen, you can see that it has kicked off quite a few hairs and that underneath it is very dark. Now, here is a Thrixopelma ocrati who's also kicked off a lot of hairs, yet you can see that the flesh underneath it is somewhat skin colored. On the other hand, if you look at the smith eye, what you're seeing underneath is very dark. When a tarantula kicks off hair, they'll have that pale fleshy color. As they get closer to molt, it will turn darker and darker as the new exoskeleton begins to form underneath the old one. That is when this, the exoskeleton is pulled really taut because it's very tight. As the new skeleton forms underneath, that is a sign that your animal is very near a molt. What you want to do at that time is heavily moisten one side of the enclosure and stop feeding completely. Let me show you what I'm talking about. This is a lovely Brachypelma erratum and you can see the patch on his abdomen that is bald is very dark and beginning to get shiny. So what I'm going to do is remove his hide and I'm going to heavily dampen that side of the enclosure. They need a lot of humidity but you don't want the whole thing to be dry or wet. If they're too dry they will have a difficult time pumping that layer of moisture that they need to mold out of their old skeleton. If it is too wet, however, they may not feel comfortable to flip over on their back as they need to to comfortably molt. Another viewer asked me a question about whether you should rehouse a tarantula before they molt so they have plenty of room. My answer was no, not unless they are in such cramped quarters that they won't have room to lay down and stretch out during a molt. If you try to rehouse an animal that's too near a molt, they might postpone their molting until they feel more secure and if they wait too long they could have trouble and get caught up in that molt and die. I've heard of animals becoming crinkled because they had to molt during a shipping. You want to always make sure not to ship an animal that's nearing a molt and not to rehouse them unless you really really have to. This was basic info on how to Take care of your animal as they're nearing a molt. If you have more questions, please leave them in the comments below. Uh, you can private message me on deadlytarantulagirl at yahoo.com. And as always, you can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and I'll see you guys soon. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.